On the occasion of Zenith's 150th anniversary, we've come to Le Loc. It was here in 1865 that Georges Favre Jacot, who was but 22 years old then, founded the Maison. There is a watch which celebrates this anniversary called the Academy Georges Favre Jacot. It's a complicated watch that features a fusée and chain system. We're going to meet the head movement designer of Zenith, who will tell us of the links between this watch and marine clocks in Zenith's past. We'll then go to the desk and the workstation of the movement designer who is responsible actually for the design of this particular system and learn of some of the difficulties and complications associated with a fusée and chain. And then we'll have an opportunity to watch a watchmaker assemble the movement. If we want to understand and appreciate a complicated watch like the Academy Georges Favre Jacot, the anniversary piece from Zenith with its fusée and chain system, we should start where the watch was born, which is to say with the movement constructor. Now in French, the word constructor means designer, and I'm with the designer of the system of the fusée and chain for the Georges Favre Jacot watch, and he's going to explain to us how the fusée and chain work together to deliver constant force for the watch. But we're going to go deeper because there are other issues that have to be confronted when you build a system like this. How do you protect the chain when you're winding the watch? How do you keep the watch running when you're winding the watch? All of these things we're going to learn with the man who designed this system for Zenith. Okay, peut-être nous pourrions commencer par... Perhaps we can begin by identifying the main components, the barrel, the fusée, and the chain. Oui. Yes, so we have the barrel, which has the mainspring. That's the mainspring. Yes, the mainspring. Next we have the fusée, and between the two we have the chain. The chain pulls the fusée as the barrel unwinds. Here is the position with the maximum state of wind. So the barrel is fully wound at this moment. Exactly. And it pulls the fusée at the point of the smallest diameter. Exactly. So you can imagine this system like a bicycle derailleur. Exactly like a rear derailleur on a bicycle that changes the gears automatically. Now, with the barrel fully wound, it's in high gear. Yes, exactly. And when the barrel unwinds, what happens? When the barrel unwinds, it pulls on the chain, which turns the fusée. It unwinds from the fusée, following its sloped form, and that changes the effective radius of the chain. When the mainspring is weaker, that is, when it's nearly completely unwound, it pulls from the bottom. From the bottom, with a large effective radius, which compensates for the drop in force to regulate the force of the barrel. That is to say, low gear. With 50 hours power reserve, you see a straight line of force instead of a force that drops according to the depletion of the barrel you see a straight line until the end when it fully drops. So this shows the classic system for all watches. All watches. Hour, minute, the same gear train. And next we have the seconds wheel on which we've placed the axis for the hand. And for the winding. The winding is done by the crown. Oui. That's classic for a watch. Exactly. Exactly. And when one turns the crown through the gear system, that turns the fusée. La fusée. Yes, and the fusée will pull the chain, which will rewind the mainspring in the inside of the barrel. What happens when the barrel is fully wound? Alors une fois que le barrel est plein, en fait, la fusée. When the barrel is full which is the position shown, the chain will push on this ratchet. Quand ça va arriver à peu près dans cette position-là, la chaîne va appuyer sur ce cliquet. 
Et ce cliquet, il va venir en contact. And that will put it in contact with this pin, and this pin will stop any further winding. Stopper la fusée. So the chain, which is quite fragile, is protected in this way by the system. Exactly. Et pendant le remontage, il y a un système. And while one is winding the watch, there is a system to keep the watch running. Voilà, donc cette roue là, je vous ai dit qu'elle. This wheel here is independent from the fusée and covered by it. Et on a gardé que système. Quand on va être. When winding takes place, this wheel is connected to this gear, which stops the system via a ratchet. And that permits this spring to discharge its energy to run the movement. Can you give a color to this spring which keeps the watch running? Yes. The green is the spring we've been talking about. Voilà, exactement. Exactly. And we have done the calculation so that the spring gives the same force as the barrel would for a half hour. The spring unwinds moving five degrees. En contact avec la fin du trou oblong. That gives 30 minutes of running with the same force as the barrel. Et là, on va avoir la force équivalente à la force du ressort. Personne n'a pas besoin. Nobody needs a half hour to wind a watch. That's enough. One would think so. 30 minutes is enough for everybody. Charge maximum, ça suffit largement pour faire tout le remontage. That should do it for everybody. Une demi-heure pour faire le remontage. Oui, effectivement. We're joined in the Haute Horlogerie workshop of Zenith by uh, Yves Cortesi. Bonjour, Bonjour. Yves. Yves is in charge of movement development at Zenith, and it is Yves who conceived the project for the uh, uh, Academy Georges Favre Jaco watch with its fusée and chain. And he can explain to us the uh, idea that lay behind it. And si je comprends bien, if I understand correctly, there are links between the history of Zenith with its vintage marine chronometers and the watch of today. Et la montre moderne aujourd'hui. Exactement. Donc Zenith, dès sa naissance, a toujours cherché la précision. Exactly. Zenith, from its birth, was looking to achieve precision with its watches. The balances made of the metals of that period were not of the quality we have today, so they would be much more affected by changes in force if there was more or less force delivered to the balance. The system of the fusée and chain existed to compensate for that. Today, even if we have the means to be much more precise, we still want to go further, and the fusée and chain allows us to use all of the energy in the barrel. Maintenant, ce qui a progressé beaucoup depuis l'époque, c'est les moyens techniques et les matériaux. We've progressed a lot since those earlier times with our technology and materials. We've been able to miniaturize everything. The chain is minuscule, and to have constant force, we can use computers to calculate the force link by link. We have many, many links, and we have calculated the place on the fusée for each one. So it's a system that on the one hand is old, but very much improved by modern technology. Exactement. C'est vraiment tout à fait ça. Exactly. Really exactly that. Today, as an in-house manufacturer, we have a system developed by us in a case of our own. The marriage between the two is perfect. That's the advantage of being a manufacturer. In the assembly of the uh, anniversary piece, actually the last stages are what we have been talking about, which is to say the fusée and chain. They come into the watch just almost at the very, very end. And we have uh, in front of us the uh, components now that are going to go in for the system, which is to say that we have the chain, which he's showing us now, the barrel, which is going to be inserted into the watch, the bridge that's going to hold the barrel, and already uh, in its position on the movement plate, we have the fusée. So the operation begins by attaching the chain to the fusée. There is a minuscule hook on one end of the chain that is going to now be attached to the fusée. You can see the delicate winding operation to begin with, using the crown to turn the fusée. And 
you can see the care that the watchmaker is bringing to this to ensure that there are no kinks in the chain as it's put into its position. Now we're putting a bridge in place to hold the uh, fusée in, in its position. Next comes the barrel, and there's going to be an operation to attach the very tiny end of the chain to the barrel. This is the operation to attach the bridge to the barrel. So we have an interesting intersection between the past and the present with the Academy Georges Favre Jacot watch because we have a system that is quite old in time, used in marine clocks to improve timekeeping, but brought thoroughly into the present with modern techniques and a high frequency movement to bring more precision to a wristwatch.